How's it going everybody? It's Shane, and today I say goodbye to Mach 3. I figured before I take this thing all apart and repurpose part of the uh, items that are still in there, basically transferring some of them from this case over into that case, I do a bit of a review of it. Okay, so some of the stuff that's actually getting kept. First is the power supply, this guy right here. This is a toroidal style power supply, 72 volt, 20 amp. It's pretty overkill for what I'm doing, but I figured if I was going to buy one, I'd at least get one that I know would handle projects that I currently have, or if I was upgrading to something bigger, I would be able to handle it with the same power supply. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the contactor or not, or if I'm going to replace that with just a big master switch. Still debating that one. Uh, just not sure. However, I'm definitely going to keep the circuit breaker that I have on there. The fans, I'm pretty much just going to scale that back. They were way more airflow than this thing ever needed. They're essentially uh, 120 millimeter fans by, what is it, 38 millimeter thick. And they move a lot of air. I've got two separate power supplies down there that I will not be using. One's a 12 volt and the other is a 5 volt. The reason why you need a 5 volt in this case is because I'm using the Ethernet smooth stepper and it needs a separate power supply to operate. I believe with the USB style smooth stepper, you don't have to have a separate power supply just to power the board. It can be powered off the USB uh, voltage itself. I will definitely be keeping the stepper drivers. They have worked beautifully and I have no intentions of replacing them. So I will be switching them over into the new box. The MPG uh, driver isolator board, not sure I'm gonna need to keep that. Since I'm switching over to Linux CNC, I'm pretty sure all my MPG needs can be dealt with specifically on the board itself. I have a couple of different voltage uh, bus boards essentially, and yeah, that's gonna be transferred over as well. I have this teeny tiny little relay here that I used for the e-stop. Oh, where, let's see if I can get in shot, there we go. That I probably won't be transferring over because I will be using a completely different relay switch. Instead of it just being a two circuit, it'll be a four circuit and it'll handle a lot higher amperage because I've had a lot of issues in the past with this relay just not being able to reliably last. They seem to burn out every so often. So obviously I've got too much current draw going on the contacts. Okay, for the coolant, that's what this little relay is here. Uh, this one is a 12 volt, it's a 30 amp style, and it's completely optically isolated. So it's got a separate uh, power supply wire going to power the relay and a completely separate circuit that controls the opta isolator so that it is fully isolated. Unlike most of the opta isolated uh, relays that are on eBay, which really aren't fully isolated. So. I don't even know why they really bother on that one. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna be transferring the emergency stop to where the emergency stop is on the panel, the control panel itself, not in the box. And a real Achilles heel here. I regret putting the ethernet in the front like that. That was just a mistake all the way around. One that I will not be repeating. Okay, so let's go over some of the pros and cons that I've had with this thing. So the program itself, uh, it's been mostly reliable. Mostly. 
it still has some weird quirks about it that will just, it'll start moving some of the axis at random when I'm not even touching anything, which has been very irritating and it has damaged quite a few parts and tools. Hence part of the reason why I'm not using Mach 3 anymore. So the control box itself is basically pretty simple for the most part. It's been pretty reliable. And even though it's using outside air through filter screens to keep everything cool, I haven't had to clean this thing out. It has stayed fairly clean inside, which is kind of amazing considering it's been in my garage, which is not air conditioned and isn't exactly the cleanest environment to begin with. So go figure on that one. Another thing that I've had issue with with my CNC system has been the remote pendant. This thing has been great and it has been an absolute pile of crap. Let me explain. Okay, when you put this on your machine, if it's a big chunk of metal, it'll actually stick to it fairly decent with the magnets on there. However, if you have just sheet metal and you try to get it to stick, it'll stick there for a second or two, and then it'll just start sliding down. That's irritating, beyond belief. The other weird thing is, I guess for size, the only thing they could really put in here is this tiny little e-stop button. It works, and that's about the best that can be said for it. And one other thing that's really irritating with this thing. As you can see, this has options to use full four axis. However, when you turn it around and open up the back, you'll find that it's actually got openings there for a fifth axis as well. No, I mean, seriously, they went through all the effort to design the board did the, uh, what would it be, six position switch really cost that much more? I mean, come on, seriously, guys. But not that it really matters, because I won't be using it much longer. Actually, won't be using it ever again. The nice thing that Mach 3 did have going for it is you could use the program to do either mill or lathe. Not at the same time, obviously, but it was possible. And I set this up to where I could use my mill in mill turn configuration, but it did not do it very well. So when I switch over to Linux, Linux can go through mill, lathe, you know, arc, anything just about. I'm using it to power a uh, pick and place machine. Not sure how easy Mach 3 could do that. Some of the stuff that I've had issue with, with the Mach 3, is if you hit the, uh, oh, what was it, the pause button, the machine would stop basically when it felt like it. So if you hit the program pause because you thought it was going to crash into something, if you hit it, it would still probably crash into it. And the real irritating thing that I've had in one of my other videos, when I reactivated the program, it wouldn't always go right back to where it belonged and it would crash into the part. Yeah, we ain't having that. The other thing that's, it can be a problem, but in some respects it may not be, is Mach 3 only uses, it looks like an index signal for doing single point threading, I think as they call it. Whereas Linux CNC, you can do a full on encoder to where you can do rigid tap, full thread, and be very accurate with it. One of the other things that I have a problem with with Mach 3, it's no longer being developed. So essentially it has been end of life for quite a few years now. The company that sells, yes, still sells the program of Mach 3 is basically trying to get everybody to go to Mach 4. Uh, I've heard mixed reviews for Mach 4, so I'm just avoiding that one altogether. 
Something else that Mach 3 apparently can't do, or maybe I just didn't see the spot where it said it could do it, is Mach 3 cannot do multiplex style uh, switch selection. So you can't use two wires and get four separate selections out of it. Linux CNC, you can. Okay, so wrapping it all up, what would I think? Would I do Mach 3 again? Experiencing what I've experienced, no, I don't think I would. I will say though, Linux CNC isn't for everybody. I wish it was, but it, again, it comes with a bit of a learning curve. If you're willing to accept taking on that challenge, go for Linux CNC. However, if you need something that's just gonna go together and work, you're probably better off going with Centroid Acorn. It is more expensive. You still have to buy a license for it, but it's pretty much ready to just throw into a box and start connecting up wires. However, if you are looking for something that's cheap and basically works, uh, there's always Garble or GRBL, however you want to pronounce it. It's limited to three axis but it will get you about the least expensive route to make a CNC controller. Mach 3 is to a degree with Smooth Stepper, but in another respect, no, it's really not. But that's been my experience with it, and thus is my opinion. Your mileage may vary. So, with all that said, goodbye Mach 3. It's been nice while it lasted.